In this video, we'll be discussing the question 1 of question paper 52 of 9701 A levels chemistry of the examination series October November 2023. So, let's go ahead with question 1. So, here is question 1 which says thermometric titrations can be used to determine the standard enthalpy change of neutralization. The maximum temperature reached in a thermometric titrations occur at the point of neutralization between an acid and an alkali. A diagram of the apparatus used is shown in figure 1.1 and here is figure 1.1 where we can see there is a polystyrene cup here with the 25 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid here is a thermometer a stirrer and a burette containing sodium hydroxide and this is how we are going to find out the enthalpy of a neutralization so here is the method a student uses the following method and you can always pause the video and read all these steps where it's all described the procedure and where you have to record the temperature of the polystyrene cup and it says repeat step 4 until there is no further increase in temperature once the temperature starts to decrease repeat step 4 three more times that's how they have described and where every time 5 centimeter cube of sodium sodium hydroxide is added and the temperature is a measure so let's go ahead with the sub question here they have given the volume of NaOH and the temperature noted so without NaOH the temperature is 18.8 degree Celsius and then every time 5 centimeter cube of NaOH is added and the temperature is a measure so you can see that at 20 centimeter cube of NaOH the maximum temperature has reached of 27.4 and then the temperature has started decreasing on further additions of NaOH. So here it's a like plot or graph of temperature against volume of NaOH added on x-axis on the grid. Use a cross to plot each data point. Draw two straight lines of best fit. Now here you are told two straight lines the lines are straight and then you will be obtaining two straight lines one for the rise in temperature and one for the fall in temperature extra plot the two lines so that they intersect so from that we have to find out these three sub questions so before that we need to plot a point on the graph given here i'll be minimizing the graph and then we will draw the graph so here is our grid which I have minimized and plotted all the points with temperature on y axis and volume of NaOH on x axis and this is how we get a line. Now we have to draw two straight lines intersecting uh, these uh, points and uh, making and uh, two lines intersecting at a point. Now I have drawn two lines of best fit. You can see that the first line here, the first line which I have drawn from the bottom to the top, it is passing from all the points. But the second point you can see that there are two points, this one and this one is just near the line that is just touching the line. So this is the line of best fit where one point is just below the line and one point is just above the line and the remaining three points are exactly on the line. So this is how I tr tried to draw the best fit line and there are two points intersecting. Now uh, here you can say that there is one intersection and let's see how are this intersection point used by answering the sub questions. The next sub question here as you can see that use your graph to determine the maximum temperature change of the mixture. Assume the initial temperature of NaOH is 18.8 degrees Celsius maximum temperature change of the mixture. That's how we are supposed to find. So let's again look at the graph. Now here you can see that the intersecting point is approximately at 27.8 degrees Celsius. So we want to find out the maximum temperature change that is the initial temperature we have to subtract that is minus 18.8. And according to me, it should be exactly 9.0 degrees Celsius. 
So subtracting the maximum temperature minus 18.8 we get exactly 9.0 degrees Celsius and that's what I have written. Use your graph to determine the volume of NaOH needed to neutralize 25.0 centimeter cube of 1 mole of 1 mole per dm cube of HCl. So volume of NaOH also we have to determine from the graph. So you can see here I've drawn a straight line from the intersecting line towards the x-axis which gives us the volume of NaOH. You can draw it with the scale which I haven't done here. Then I can make out it is 17.5 cm cube of NaOH which is required for the neutralization. So let's write it here as 17.5 cm cube of NaOH required for the neutralization. So let's go ahead with the next sub question where it says use your answer to 3 to calculate the concentration of NaOH in moles per dm cube. Now to calculate the concentration we need moles of NaOH which we don't have but we have the volume and concentration of HCl. So first calculate the moles of HCl from which we will get the moles of NaOH which is concentration into volume that is 1.0. You can see the concentration of HCl is 1.0 into the volume that is 25 centimeter cube of HCl so 25 centimeter cube which we divide by 1000 to get the dm cube volume and this gives us the answer of 0.025 moles of HCl now if you look at the equation the moles of HCl and moles of NaOH will be same so concentration is equal to moles upon volume this is for NaOH sodium hydroxide so moles is 0.025 divide by the volume now volume we know this 17.5 uh, centimeter cube so 17.5 again into 10 power minus 3 that is divide by 1000 I'm doing to change it into dm cube and this gives us the answer of 1.1 43 moles per dm cube so let me write it here 1.43 moles per dm cube of sodium hydroxide is obtained this way so if we go ahead yeah here is the grid yes let's go ahead with this next sub question 5 it says suggest why a titration using an indicator is more accurate than a thermometric titration now in thermometric titration what are we doing we are measuring the change in the temperature and what we are doing in the titration is direct titration using a color change with the help of an indicator so with the help of titration we immediately get the volume of NaOH which is required for the neutralization whereas in thermometric titration what are we doing is we are adding 5 cm cube of NaOH every time measuring the temperature plotting the graph and then finding the intersecting point of these lines to find the volume of NaOH needed for the neutralization. So in that case we will say that titration, titration using indicator titration using indicator is faster indicator is faster why because instantly we get the color change and we get the volume of NaOH sodium hydroxide required for the neutralization so if it's one mark you can just end up writing titration using indicator is faster you don't need to explain but if it carries two or three marks then you can explain that thermometric titration uh, we don't get exact volume immediately for that we have to perform experiment plot the graph and from the graph we get the uh, volume of NaOH required for neutralization so here we are directly writing in one sentence only okay next uh, question is suggest a suitable piece of apparatus for the transfer of 25 centimeter cube of 1 mole per dm cube HCl. Now if we are transferring exactly 25 centimeter cube of HCl to any of the apparatus we can directly use a volumetric pipette. Volumetric pipette. Pipette and burette are actually the apparatus which gives us the accurate volume and if we are not using any variable volume or fixed volume just once then use pipette. So we write volumetric pipette next sub question says determine the percentage error of the measured temperature increase when the first 5 centimeter cube of NaOH is added so now first understand uh, what is a percentage error percentage error is actually the 
first let's understand what is the maximum error maximum error is the measurement which we can't do in the thermometer as we are talking about temperature change we need to understand that what temperature we can't measure with the help of thermometer for for that we need to understand that what kind of pipette or the thermometer we are using and yes let's see here it's written place a thermometer with 0.2 degrees celsius divisions so what is the lowest division which we can read in the lowest temperature which we can read in the thermometer is 0.2 so that shows that if a temperature change is 0.1 we can't read so 0.1 is the maximum temperature error of the thermometer okay so let's see how are we going to calculate it now if we are taking the temperature increase so obviously we are taking an initial temperature and then the final temperature two temperature we are taking so twice we are using the thermometer so the percentage error what are we going to do is the maximum error is 0.1 we will multiply it by 2 why because we took the re reading that is we use the thermometer twice so 2 into 0.1 divide by the reading which we have taken for the first 5 centimeter cube of NOH added now it's written measured temperature increase when the first 5 centimeter cube of NOH is added so let's go ahead and see what is the measured increase in the temperature so increase in the temperature from 18.8 .8 to 21.3 the difference here is 2.5 degrees Celsius. So we need to understand what's the increase in the temperature when first 5 centimeter cube of NOH is added. That is 2.5. So let's divide that reading here. What are we doing? Maximum error multiply by 2 because we use the thermometer twice. Divide by the temperature increase or divide by the reading we used for the first 5 centimeter cube of NOH added. And then as we are calculating the percentage error multiply it by 100. So this is how we are going to calculate the maximum percentage error. And so our answer is 8.00. So here 8.0 percentage we can write percentage error is 8.0. Okay, let's go ahead with the next sub question. Says standard enthalpy change of neutralization delta H neutralization is defined as the enthalpy change when one mole of water forms from H plus that is hydrogen ions aqueous and hydroxide ion aqueous. In another experiment, a student finds that 22.10 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube of NaOH increases the temperature by 6.0 degrees Celsius when added to 25.0 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube of HCl. That you can always revise when you are further on calculation. Here is the equation and use the formula delta H minus is equal to minus MC delta T to determine the standard enthalpy change of neutralization in kilojoules per mole. Now another point given here is assume the mass of 1 centimeter cube of solution is 1 gram. Okay, so if we calculate delta H is equal to minus MC delta T. Now what is the mass? Mass is the total mass of the solution used here. So what is the total mass of solution used here is NaOH is 22.10 and HCl is 25.00. And we know that 1 centimeter cube is equal to 1 gram. So we directly add 2 volumes and we get 47.10 that is the mass. What is the C that is the specific heat of water is 4.18. And delta T, delta T is the temperature change and you can see here the temperature change given is 6.0 degrees Celsius. So this is how we are going to calculate the delta H. Now this delta H should be given into kilojoules per mole. So again divide by the moles of any one substance. Moles of NaOH we can calculate here. Now again understand why 
divide by the moles moles here it says write the answer in kilojoules per mole so per mole means we need to divide it by the moles now if we are taking NaOH neutralization NaOH so we need to find out the moles of sodium hydroxide and moles of sodium hydroxide is concentration into volume so what is the concentration of NaOH 1.00 multiply by the volume that is 22.10 again we need to divide it by 1000 because we need to change the volume into dm cube so i have done 10 into 10 power minus 3 again now we need to change it into kilojoules so again we need to divide it by thousand so that's why i'm doing it all together and we get the answer as minus 53.5 kilojoules per mole so answer is minus 53.5 5 kilojoules per mole so let's understand what i had done first we calculated the delta h only by multiplying the mass into specific heat of water into change in the temperature mass of solution total solution so we added total volume of the solution of NaOH and HCl that is 22.15 plus 25 which is 47.10 C specific heat of water is 4.18 and temperature change is given in the question which is 6.0 now we need to change it into kilojoules per mole so again per mole means divided by the moles so we took the moles of NaOH by multiplying its concentration and volume so so here we have multiplied by concentration and volume divide by thousand again to change it into kilojoules so again divide by thousand and we got the answer 53.5 okay this question is done here let's go ahead with the next sub question here it says the theoretical value for the standard enthalpy change of neutralization in the reaction between HCl and NaOH is minus 57.6 and what we have got is minus 53.5 so our enthalpy change is lower give one reason why the value obtained in D is in D differs from the theoretical value if you were unable to obtain your answer in D use 46.4 but no we have already got the answer so this is not the correct value of the answer okay so that shows that our calculated value is lower than the actual value it means that there has been some loss in the heat the temperature change had been measured lower than the actual one so heat loss to the surrounding is a major reason that why we get the practical value lower than the theoretical value so here we'll write there is a heat loss heat loss during the experiment during the experiment so the value measured for the temperature change is different than the actual value and so the value measured practically experimentally will be lower than the theoretical value okay the next sub question suggests why the standard enthalpy change of neutralization determined using ethanoic acid okay is less exothermic than the standard enthalpy change using hydrochloric acid what's the difference here is hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and ethanoic acid is a weak acid okay so ethanoic acid is less exothermic so heat evolved will be lesser okay you can just write one reason here that it carries two marks so we need to explain two valid points so you can say that ethanoic acid ethanoic acid ethanoic acid is a weak acid ethanoic acid is a weak acid so the energy needed energy needed energy needed for its dissociation dissociation is greater energy needed for its dissociation is greater so you can see that the energy absorbed will be greater little greater and so the total energy evolved or the total energy change during the reaction will be less exothermic so this is how we are going to explain and you can see that the question one has ended here question two will discuss in the next video